that time of the week again where we get to chill and just enjoy ourselves here on live chat welcome to every single person that has just tuned in to just chill together with us here on live chat so today we just want to have a very cool and awesome time together we just want to get to catch up and find out where life is taking us and a bit just get to find out really how life as a Christian looks like. So today, as usual, I always have someone with me on set because obviously I cannot do the talking alone, right? So today I have with me right from that corner. Um, Mark Leon Kabale. I am born again and I'm really privileged to be here yet again. Yeah, it's an honor. It's an honor each and every time. <laughs> Karibu on set. Mark, there was a time we had you some time back and you had promised us that you would start baking. So I really just want to find out how far, how far have you already bought the oven or what, what's happening? In the United Kuchoma. Yeah, but uh, I'm not yet there. Mm -hmm. That was just a few weeks ago. Come uh -huh. on. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> slowly, gradually. Corona, Iko, that's my excuse. <laughs> yeah, it's Corona, bro. It's, it's corona. corona. It's Corona, bro. I see. Oh, so you're agreeing on that corona. simple corona. excuse. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, not yet. Um, I'm, still, I'm still really thinking through it. Um, I don't I think I'm overthinking as well. Yeah, uh -huh. but, uh, like, how, how about if I blow the kitchen or something like that? Is that what you're overthinking? Yeah, like, I think I'm just this kind of person who wants to just get things figured out mentally. Before I attempt anything, you like, can action I take them. little risks in my life, uh, uh -huh. generally. So probably that's the phase I'm in. But I think I'm going to start. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just wake up one day and I'm like, you know what? Iki to end. And as always, it's such a joy <laughs> to have you here thank on you, Live Chat. You. Yes. Uh, hello, my name is Junior. Uh, Junior Amashai Sozuri. Um... I'm a born again Christian and I'm happy to be here. I like the fact that, you know, he, he started off on a very low note, but then he, he gets to, I'm a born again Christian, and then there's some oomph in, in his voice, yeah? Yeah, we get that you are proud to be living and rejoicing for Jesus, right? You know, you know, you, know, you, you got to, you got to, man. You got to. I feel, I feel like it's the only reason, it's the only reason, and it's the only, it's the only thing that keeps. Every Christian rolling, mm -hmm. with everything, with Corona, <laughs> with Corona happening, my guy, I think Christ is the only thing that can keep you rolling. Yeah? I know, I think that this period that we're living in, it can get a bit tumultuous because things are st slowly starting to change. I feel like, especially after we were looking forward to Kufunguliwe, you know, let them open, let the curfew be extended. And then I was thinking... I was amongst those ones who were making so much noise. Kufunguliwa, kufunguliwa, it was open. Yeah, well, have I gone anywhere? I have not. <laughs> You're still here. You know, I am still here. I haven't gone anywhere. So, but some things we expect them to change, but I feel like it's just a winning. It's a winning period. We just take, uh, expect that it will be baby steps and it will be for progress to happen. Then definitely there's a process that goes into it. I don't know, I don't know what you feel about this period and what this season. I mean, uh, this season has been really interesting. I was also one of those people, just like you, who wanted, ah, he could be from Bolivia. Ah, Twanze, Twanze Kwenda, at least out of the county, you know, Kidogo. I, I was like, hey, my work out of the county is, is being held up. Hey, Kwa Fungulia, I was like, wait, where is the work that I was? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. You know, but uh, but but I think I think just that mentality that we are closed in somewhere um, it makes us feel I I need to I need to I need to get out of this or something like that. You know, we crave for freedom as human beings. So I think that is the kind of state that we are in. Our zine, you know. And now that uh, that freedom is there, like okay, so what do I do with this freedom? You know, you, I think we've been in curfew for so long that we can't even, we don't know what life without curfew could look like. You know, it's, it, it, could actually, it will actually be unusual, you know, to move outside, the, outside home after 10 p.m. I think when that time comes, it will be quite unusual. But that's probably you and me. Maybe Juni has flown out. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, th thanks for the prayers. I feel like, you know, God is saying something, yeah? But, but apparently, uh, I realized, actually, yesterday I asked someone, uh, we were, I was just on an Uber, and I, it was at, at 8, actually, and there was no one, no one on the road. I was like, is it that people are used to the 8 curfew, that after extending it, all of us were just like, oh, let's open the country, please, president, open the... But, okay, after the country is opened, all of us are still in the house. We're just used to it. I feel like... Mm -hmm. I feel like it's become the new normal. The abnormal has now become the new normal for us, you know. And we, we ought to live with it. And, and, and like Kabale has said here, that, you know, I feel like, I feel like the same, same. I think when, when that time comes when um, there'll be no curfew, 
no no restrictions you still have restrictions but as in just it's just in your mind it's uh-huh. it's already there it's already there that you you're supposed to be in the house but this type mm. and actually we, we are we are used to that now it's our mm. new normal man mm. it's mm. our new normal and i guess another new normal that we are supposed to be living with right now is the mm. fact that things are hiking in prices hey, my goodness awesome. bread is as of now i think it's 55 you yeah. know i went to the shop mm. and then mean ilikuwa nimeenda my kawaida 50 but because i mean yeah, 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 like, then i go shift. and then the shopkeeper is giving me that weird look yeah yeah sister iko up 5 I like, I was sure that I asked what, <laughs> what is happening and he said don't you watch the news yes, yes, and yes. I I was shocked to be honest life is becoming mm. a bit hectic to be able to catch up with I don't know yeah. if it it's the same for you guys I, I think the first question is who hikes the price of bread man <laughs> as in <laughs> we were born when bread was 50 bob banana uh-huh. actually not 50 bob I think at some point was, it started at 30 yeah, I yeah. remember growing up it was at 30 bob yeah bread was actually really really cheap at it says you telling me bread is 55 okay I have not gone to the shop lately mm-hmm. but I I don't know if I'm not going to this guy looks like he relates you know uh-huh. <laughs> but, but personally personally I feel like I feel like everything has become very very expensive and with corona corona has brought a lot of changes first of all I think where I I felt the pain kidogo was 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 fuel kwa sababu eh people who drive ah, eh? hey, you know like like i said you, know, you never know what god is saying you, know, you never know what god is speaking uh-huh. but interestingly uh, i think i think i had a testimony actually it's not me i had a testimony on someone uh, who was calling a certain radio station and she was saying how you know she had to close her jobs manze because as in everything is so expensive everything is so so expensive mm. that everything she's trying it's it, it's 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 a it's a loss every business is a loss every business and 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 she started from fuel you know mm-hmm. you know it's it's just too much for kenyans and it's uh, it's a period and it's a it's a very tough time right now especially for those people who are self employed and 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 for people who are hustling out there hey, 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 hey if you're from the ghetto you they, would know this but they are hard <coughs> thank god for you eh? you know <laughs> <laughs> yes thank god for me <laughs> mark <laughs> no, um, um to be honest i think okay i i normally um I, i'm also a fan of bread me and me and like my bros So normally I we buy the, like the bigger loaf cuz now it's not just me eating, uh-huh. you know? the family loaf yes ile ile kubwa sasa those days it used to be 80 kidogo na wana ni 85 90 said me fika wana 5 and I'm like eh. you know I just walked into a spam like wait uh, and I think I sent my bro and he's like hey by the uh, bed is not this amount I'm like wait what I chukua ile yenye tunanuanga no 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 it's one of five i'm like hey okay that's yes i think i just said that i'm like hey but there and you know, the reason as to why commodities are actually uh, you know going up in price at the moment is cuz taxes are going up we're paying we're paying debt we have, we have to pay debt back to those who uh, you know um have lent us as a country so the taxes are going up for that specific reason that now we are paying back to those who we are in debt for so It's uh it's of course a sad state of affairs but uh you know what I also there's someone who really challenged me at some point as like uh and, and I, I, could, I was like I can't relate with you I was like you know what for me I've never felt the pinch of price rises I was like wait what There's evident shock on my face uh, Yes uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah cuz I was like I I think I've, I've um, you know by God's grace I've worked so hard I've worked hard to get to a level where with small price rises in commodities and those things really don't like I, I don't relate I don't relate as I was like wait what <laughs> you know which kind of life are you living at but I was like I think I understand you actually because I think there are people like that who mm-hmm. don't actually feel mm-hmm. um the pinch as much you know they only feel the pinch when now the figures now are excessive um in 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 now the fi- mi- millions and things like that but in small shillings yeah, five bob, five bob but at, <laughs> at 10 bob mepanda kwa mafuta you can't relate you can't <laughs> relate, 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 you. Can't <laughs> relate no. at all so the people all. who are on both sides of the coin uh-huh. so yeah it depends on which side you fall but i don't know i i i really feel sad because i feel like um not currently being able to relate with the small price changes of things is what drives so many young people to say if it was someone else who was listening to that and in their mind i think it would register that you know what i want to work so hard so that i can be able to earn and afford all these things and not really be bothered by price changes and not care to make a difference and change life so you're just working to be able to afford it for yourself and not really care what is happening around you i don't know that is what i am feeling but 
But before we proceed, because we can continue doing this all day <laughs> and every day, because we just want to get to understand what is happening in our nation. And as young people, we are totally invested in our country. But there's something that Junior mentioned, and that is about a lady giving testimonies. And that is what we are going to be talking about when we come back after the break. But before that, we were chilling at Asiana Garden and enjoying a beautiful and ambient place. Join us after the break. comfortable you are with sharing your testimony stories have you ever just walked into a room and into a place and the first thing you said is hi my name is so and so and I love Christ and I love Christ because he has done this and this and this in my life are you comfortable saying that in a crowd of people are you comfortable Mark <laughs> uh, I, I am but trust me it's not easy mm -hmm. um, because I think I've come a long way and that's why I'm, I'm actually at this point I think uh, growing up, even just the fact that uh, going to at Inmenda Church, hey, like you, you feel um, a level amongst your friends. You're like, hey, hey, uku. just even going to church, let alone get, being born again. Yeah, in a shukisha points. Yeah, hey, in a shukisha bonga points. Hey, hey, where's he? Gangster points. Hey, 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 hey. So, I, I, you know, growing up, it was not a, it, it was not the cool thing to say. And so, um, of course, with my friends, and I was also just among those people. Let me just put it out there for maybe someone who may relate as one of those people who was actually mocking Christians in high school. When you call it, it's a scare, scare, scare. Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You'll be like, ah, I say, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to Lo and behold, these days, I'm the one who is leading prayer me to God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I used mm -hmm. to be one of those people who could, who persecuted Christians. Lo and behold, I'm not the one who leads prayer meetings these days. So, <laughs> you know, so it was, um, you know, over 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 that time, of course, I didn't uh, I didn't really understand why are these people really coming together to pray at Bible study. Like, uh, you know, I used to I used to actually it reached a point where. Even in the school, when they started talking about those people and those cliques that come together to pray in the night, at you, oh, they're making people noise for people in the domes. Our son was cheering, you know, while they were hold torches. And uh, uh, in the school, uh, I was like, those guys, those guys, they shouldn't do this A, B, C, and D. Hey, man, when I look back at those times, I'm like, what? What? What was I thinking? You know, I wasn't really serious about um, the whole aspect of the faith. But I, I knew, I knew about God. I knew, I knew a bit of things about God. But I didn't really know what it means to actually confess and profess the faith. So, fast forward, fast forward. I, uh, I, I, I mean, as as I grew up, of course, I encountered Christ. But still, even as a believer, I wasn't so comfortable in myself to be bold about my faith. You know, to say, and not be bold earlier, yeah, because yes, there's, there's two aspects about being bold. There's, yes, the professing, um, even with your mouth and confessing, but also there is the living out of your faith. You know, there's, on the day-to-day -day basis, how do you actually apply the principles of your faith? And so for me, it was a, a real big struggle, you know, on both ends, to actually say it, because of the friends, my peers, I don't want to lose, as he said, uh, I lose his words, gangster points, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are not my words. Those are his words. You know, you don't want to lose points around your friends because your friends will think you're this uh, this piri guy. Um, but to be honest, I think after you know a long while, I, f I felt, wait, who am I trying to impress? You know, I'm I'm really not trying to impress anyone here. Um, I'm 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 actually just confessing what is actually true about me you know i've been saved i've been saved from somewhere you know they have this whole testimony about my life and i would also want others to actually you know receive this jesus i think for me the motivation is even you know i'm now an ambassador of christ i'm no longer just uh you know me Mark as Leon Kabale. Mark Leon Kabale, you uh -huh. know, i'm actually representing a kingdom so how can i be able to represent that kingdom if i am not bold enough to actually yes. speak it out junior um i think i think um 
most part of what Kabale said, I relate to it 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, because, let me tell you, and, 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 and forgive me for saying this, but it's easy for me to say I'm a Chelsea fan. You know, because I am. <clears throat> let's just talk about you that. Just first. <laughs> you just had to mention that. You just had to mention Chelsea. You know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. you know I, 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 just, I just have to. I just have to. You know, when, when, you, are, when you are like the pride of London and, you know, everything is just blue. You know, I, you have to mention these things, Bana. And, and I'm so proud to be a Chelsea fan. <laughs> and even oh, back, right. back in the days, for, I think for the longest time in my life, I've always been so proud to be a Chelsea fan than I've been. Um, to, be to be a Christian, mm -hmm. and 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 as as much as as much as um, I'm winning as a Chelsea fan, it I uh, if I compare how I how, how I was as a Chelsea fan and how I was as a Christian, I would say I was more of a Chelsea fan than I was of a Christian, mm -hmm. and 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 because I knew every update, I got updates about Chelsea every month, first eleven, you know, goal scorers, everything about Chelsea. But when it comes to Christ, um, I just know that Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Yeah, personal. Yeah. Emphasis on the personal. Uh -huh. but, but, but you know, you know, you know, as as much as uh, but now I, I over the years, over the years, I've, I've come to to realize that actually, and I, uh, right now I um, um, you know, I I serve in in, in in youth ministry, and I anytime I talk to a teenager who's going to high or to campus, especially campus, not high school, but at at a high school as well, um, I always tell them one thing. One very, very important information about your introduction should be about your relationship with God. Let me tell you something. I always tell, tell them this, and it's something I personally have experienced. Because I was not... You know, it's easy to tell someone out of, out of, <laughs> out of what you've not... Um, where, where you've not been than where you've been. Um, for example... Sorry. Um, I always tell them, when you, go to when you go to school, try to introduce yourself as... My name is Junior, uh, Junior Mashai Sozuri, and I'm born again. Half of your class won't be your friends. Half of your class won't relate to what you're saying. I promise you, just, just by just saying those simple words, and I'm born again, just adding that in your introduction makes a very big difference in your life, makes a very big difference in the kind of click you're going to have in that. Because, because we, we make friends in the first week, first week of campus, first week, first week of high school is when we make friends. And in this first week, if you just acknowledge God this week, if you just acknowledge God this week, I promise you people will, will panga form and they won't call you. Even in that week, that same week that you've joined campus, you know? And, and I, I feel like Leon can relate and, and, and Atta, you hope, I think, and, and everyone else there who has gone through campus, they can relate to this. Because personally for me, um, I felt like, you know, I needed to, I needed to, to be more intentional. Because intentionality and... Personalizing your salvation is what makes makes a difference here. You, you can be a Christian, but you can you can be a Christian by religion. You know, um, brought up in a, in a Christian family like I was, you know, serving but to in you, church. It's just a routine. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. for, for me, especially me. Let me tell you. <laughs> let's not talk. About, let's not even talk <laughs> about my high school. <laughs> if we start talking about my high school, mm -hmm. I, I know, I know, you you you'll test me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Because apparently I was I was I was I was serving in in, in um in praise and worship. Mm -hmm. I, I was I was I was serving as a prefect for spiritual and protocol in the school, and and at the same time. Che on zit on zit yeah, at the same time. Uh -huh. You know, I told you these things, flying <laughs> Mercedes, you know, mm -hmm. these things. Uwe. It's God, but Uwe. anyway. Uh, <laughs> actual. Yeah. So um, so I was serving in school and 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 still. As much as I was, I was, I was, I was, I was in, in, in school, in, in, in the school's um, uh, body as a prefect representing the Christian side. As much as I was, I was in, this, uh, in the praise and worship team. As much as I was still in the CU com, all these things did not, did not actually. Um, I, I would say, I'd say, I had to rededicate my life to Christ even after all this. Because these things were not the assurance of my Christianity. These things were not assurance of my relationship with God. They were just titles. They were just routine. They were just normal and temporary things that every other person can have, you know. Every other person that has been brought up in a Christian family can have all these aspects, but still lack the, the personal relationship, relationship with God. Relationship with Jesus. Yeah. So for you, it was, you would never stand in front of people. Ama, you would just say it for technicality. Let me tell you something. Imagine, imagine, no, no I just want you to imagine, okay? This is a group of five, 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 five young men, okay? You guys, you guys are in music, okay? Music festivals, eh? 
you're there with um, a, a few girls, you know, ah, from, from these posh schools, you know, you want to vibe with schools, them. Yeah? Mm-hmm. you know, the vibe, and, and, and then you introduce, and everyone is introducing themselves, and you're like, oh, my name is Junior Sazuri, and I'm born again, even, even that doesn't even make sense, you know, it doesn't even make sense, bro, mm-hmm. <laughs> as in, what? You're bringing God to... Automatically, it's like you're killing the vibe. Yeah, yeah? basically. Unangusha bogi. Uh-huh. Unangusha <laughs> bogi, bro. My goodness. I don't know. I think growing up, I'd say the church I went to at that time, mm-hmm. we were not keen on giving testimonies, especially talking about Christ is my personal savior. In fact, I think I've said this like a million times. I used to laugh at people when they'd stand and the very first thing is, my name is so-and-so, and I love Christ, and he's my personal <laughs> savior, and I got born again in the year, yeah. I'd laugh. You're like, what do like, you mean? Surely, what is, this is too much information, <laughs> yes, you know? Yes, this, yes. So I never would have said it. I yeah. never would have said it. Mm. And then I can now remember when you guys are talking about it, then I just want to congratulate one person. I, I, I don't think I will mention her name, but she knows herself in my high school, the very first week of high school, when we just want to get there and we want to seem all cool because we want to make friends, and we just want to make an impression. And at that time, she was really short. She was really so tiny. And she didn't have a lot of hair. And the very first thing she says is she stands. And then she had a really pitchy voice, you know. And then she comes from, the place where she comes from, her accent is very heavy. But the first thing she says is, hi, my name is so-and-so. And and I love Jesus as my personal savior. At that time, it it really seemed so weird at that point. It really seemed so weird. Mm. Why would you even do that? My goodness, why? I feel like, I felt like that was something for older people to do. You yeah. know, not for young people. When you shall so, go wherever, where you know, you so that? then I was thinking, but there no wonder because you come from. Yeah, no wonder aye. you can be able to say that. But us people from town, people from town, we don't I do mean, this. Cool we don't do guys, this. don't yeah. do this thing. You know, yeah. you know, and I am thinking that now, looking at it now, this is one of the things that is plaguing us, especially Christians in the urban center. It is very hard for us, especially say, Mark, you walk into a corporate setup. Are you able to just say when you're greeting your clients? Are you able to just stand there and say, how are you? My name is Mark Leon Kabale. And before I give you this proposal, I just want to say Christ is my personal savior. And this week, this is what I experienced. And I believe that God is real. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's actually really difficult. Um, I say it's difficult is this. Because uh, especially in the field that I'm in, um, we deal in... Uh, construction and real estate and of course you're going to meet different people of different kinds different clients of different kinds you know and uh now you're going to meet for example this person who is not of a different maybe uh, belief or religion um, than what you believe in so uh you started like ah, yes uh, thank you thank you so much uh, for coming it's been a, my name is mark leon cavale you know i'm born again and you know christ is my personal savior yeah, so um, let's start. Uh, let's, uh, so how do you want us to draw your house? <laughs> you know, the shock on someone's face. Um, of course, when they hear, what? But I've, I've, I've come to learn, and as I told you even at the beginning of, of, of this, uh, this section that we're talking about testimonies, is, you see, there's two ways, two big ways of, to, of, of you know, bringing Being out your testimony. Being bold about your faith. It's in what you say but in also how you actually live on a day-to-day basis, you know. Because, you see, in um, the fruit that we actually produce, the th- us bearing much fruit is actually going to show the world, really, this is what Christ is about, you know. It's so much, it goes so much to say that, yes, words can really go a long way, but in fact, if someone actually sees that fruit, you bearing much fruit in Um, in your life, how you do things. You know, it's in the small things. It's in the integrity, how you treat people with kindness, how joyous you are in in, in just how you do um, your things, how patient, you know, the clients who just, they just get to, you know, but how patient are you in those kind of situations? And it's, it's really the fruit of the spirit that indeed I feel will actually really show that yes, as much as this person I'm going to introduce is born again, but this person will cut corners to actually go and bribe to get a certain uh, uh, a certain deal through the line to get his architectural drawings through the county or his engineering uh, structure drawings through, you know, those kind of things. Those are actually what actually show is my testimony legit, or is my testimony illegit? Kusema, you know, 
I feel that is um, what I would, how I would address that uh, specific question. That it's not, that it not just be about talking, but let it also be your actions actually speaking and representing Christ. Mm -hmm. But, but I want to add on what Kabale is saying and say that actually actions really matter. But not neglect the power of you saying that you're born again. Mm -hmm. Because apparently, one thing I know for sure, one thing I know for sure, that there are very many people out there who can treat you very nicely, who are so kind, who are so considerate, who have all these good virtues that someone can look up to, or can want to have in a person, and they are not born again. Mm -hmm. And that is two very different things. You know, mm -hmm. you being kind to someone and you being born again, two very different things, by the way. So uh, I feel like as much as, yes, you'll want to show by your actions, your words as well matter. You confessing. Mm -hmm. After the Bible tells us that, confess. Confess one to, to the other. And again, it tells us uh, to, to confess uh, after you get born again. You confess your faith. You, when you go somewhere, just confess. Just first thing first, we need to understand this thing. As a Christian, is it easy now that because at I'm born again, you know, I'm serving in ministry and I've known God more than I knew him when I was in high school and, 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 and you know, my early ages, is it easy now for me to, 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 to you know, come and just um, tell people, you know, I'm junior and I'm born again? No. It will never be easy because in every, in every different setup, um, and I might, whenever you meet different people, you don't know how they'll react to this information. So it's just... It, you know, you, 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 always, you always want to hold back. You always want to, 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 to not tell people that you're born again because you're like, I, you know, but this is campus, man. As in, how am I telling you that I'm born again? So you just know by, by my action. And very many people out there uh, want to tell you that, Najwa, I'm just, I'm, I'm, me, I'm, I'm low-key Christian. You know, you, you, I don't have to announce to the whole world that I'm Christian. L let me just be low-key Christian and let it be a personal relationship between me and God. Bro, let me tell you something. You know, you have to tell people that you're born again. If you're born again, Tell me you're born again. Let me, let me, know, let me know by your words, first of all. Because I, I believe, I believe your, your words come from your heart. And from your heart, um, whatever you store in your heart actually comes out. And if it comes out that you, um, that you that if your words tell us that you're born again, it's actually here in your heart. For you to have the confidence to come and tell me that you're born again, it is from your heart. You know, so I'm saying, I'm not saying that every time I meet people, the first thing I tell them, ah, you know what, <laughs> me and Jesus, ooh. We are here, you know. As in, I personally, I mean, I find it difficult sometimes telling people. I'm telling a certain clique of people that I'm born again because I have friends who, um, like, I have two friends, two friends, just my neighbors, and and both of them smoke weed, you know. And and, and I think we met. I don't know how we met. I think we met in the gym or something. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't just tell them at the. Hey, you know what? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? You know, I'm born again. I'm just, you know, I, I, could, I couldn't just tell them that. You know? uh -huh. So, I, I don't know. I Probably my actions speak more because I think they've tried offering me bank and I've, uh, you know, I've always been diffusing and stuff and be, I'm, I'm telling them, hey, you know, I don't trust in this and um, this is not what I do. I do things differently. You know how we do it, yeah. Let, let, me, let, but, me, let, me, let me back that point that he's just actually mentioned and how important it is to actually share. Um, there's this client one day who just, uh, out of nowhere, you know, we meet. Uh, we meet, uh, we have a meeting, not out of nowhere, we actually planned this meeting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> actually planned this meeting. Um, he was given my number by someone who knows what I do. And I was like, you know what, let's, uh, let's meet, discuss about this project, A, B, C, and D. So one day, uh, so as I'm meeting him, um, uh, I think I think I was I was on the phone. I was talking about something about church, and because so, I think I was going for a ministry meeting, uh, like later that evening. So I just talk about something about church. But Aku Lisa Aku Probmo. Then um, as 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 we're discussing, uh, yeah, I talk about you know uh, my faith. Uh, just just a snippet, not like like major, but I just talk about something. I don't really remember it very vividly, but this is this is what really I remember how powerful this story was. Was this this guy after after me speaking and me and me, I was like I've met so many people who have who are who I would have worked with. However, I think you are among the few people who have met and are bold about talking before me. About their faith. About their faith. And he's like, oh, by the way, what church do you go to? I got sit and value it. Like, oh, I also go there. I'm like, hey, wait. <laughs> I 
but I was like, hey, I think young man, there's something, there's something that you have, there's something that you have taught me, and how important it is to actually be bold about my faith, and that is that 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 is another thing. Now there's another instance, a friend of mine, who uh, now, I mean, he met he met with this client so and so, and after after meeting this client, he was like, you know what? Uh, uh, I, th I think there's something he did that wasn't, he didn't sit right with his client. Then Kidogo and Apatana a church. You know, it was, it, it was really crazy because it was like, what? Hey, Pio, what? Like, you know, what? It, was, it was a tricky situation. So yeah. I think, I think um, I'll, I'll still go back to my point. It's important to confess as well with your mouth. But I think also just uh, being able to back it up with your actions. I think that's being a real ambassador. Of Christ. Because what, what I am thinking is, why is it ever so hard to even in conversations just say, like the Bible says this and this, you know, when we're with our friends, why is it so hard? Because looking at the life of Jesus, see what Jesus actually commands us. He tells us in his word to go out and say and tell of what he has done. See, whenever he was performing miracles, Jesus would tell people in, in some instances that we have seen in the Bible, go and tell it out. Right? He would tell us, go and tell it out. But then why do we find it so hard as Christians? Because sometimes you want to speak in a conversation. Why is it that we, in fact, feel like it's offensive? Why do we feel like it's offensive to just talk about a verse? Or say you are talking about something and then give reference to a verse in the Bible. Why do we find it so offensive? Uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, let me say something. Huh? Um, I feel like it would have been very easy. And I'm, I'm not trying to be offensive or anything. And if this sounds offensive to anyone, please forgive me. But um, I wish we had we had clothes, like like Muslims, where you just look at someone and be like, ah, okay, you're a Muslim. Cindy, you know, at a, at a, without, but without yeah. just saying it already, they can tell. They can tell. <laughs> uh -huh. but, but you know, like, like, a, like a Christian girl. Yeah, like a Christian girl. <laughs> like you just walk with a Christian girl, man. Say, if you see me with a certain gunia, you know, ah, this guy is a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Why did you have to put a gunia in touch anyway? Uh, we could have had something which had swag more. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, oh, like, yeah. Oh. But that's, that's beside the point. Oh, okay. uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, it will have been very easy. Um, but what makes it difficult, first of yeah. all, is, is, is what we think. And, and what we, we as Christians has painted out there. Because there's a certain, a certain kind of picture we've painted out there that people expect when you just tell them you're a Christian. First of all, you don't suffer. Second of all, you don't sin. You and sin never meet. What? You? Sinning? No. Mm -hmm. What? No way. Christian. So you see, they're, they're, just, they're just things we've, we've painted and we have, um, there's just a way we have de de described Christianity and we've shown Christianity to be to the world that whenever, if we are telling them that we are Christians because they'll judge us from these standards that you've set, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I feel like, I feel like most of the times you, you, you'll always, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll rather you rather keep your Christianity identity under wraps. And, under, under, yeah. Because, you know, anytime you tell these people, they'll start judging you from that cup. And you do this and this, and you bro, confess see, that you are a Christian. Hey, bro, bro, see, see, we, we jump the other day, and you, you tell us you're a Christian. Ah, bro, see, we tell you them, and you tell us you're a Christian. One thing that they forget is, even if I'm a Christian, I'm still junior, you know? That's why I start my introduction as I'm Junior Sozuri Moshai and I am born again. I don't say I'm born again and I'm born again. You know, I, no, I start with Junior. <laughs> this is my identity. So you have to accept that first of all, I'm, I'm a man. I am a human being too Before in addition being to being a Christian. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. yes. Mark? Um, I, I'd love to attach a verse to it, uh, Romans chapter one verse sixteen. <clears throat> it says, "For I'm not ashamed of the." Paul says, I'm, "For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to all men, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile." Um, when I when I think about that verse, it it, it points out for me a few things. Now, why is Paul not ashamed? He's not ashamed of this gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to all men, not just a few, but to all, right? And so the reason as to why Paul has not, um, I'd love to just imagine in Paul's mind, he's not ashamed of the gospel because he has experienced this power. He has experienced this power and then not only does he experience it, but he also experiences that this power can also save someone else. Right, and that's why he's not ashamed of, you know, professing uh, professing this gospel. But even coming back to your point, I feel, um, in addition to what Junior has said, 
um, sometimes we want to keep Christ in a closet to only come out when we need. So when you know, we are in when tight circles. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Only when the time I want, I want Jesus is when ah, the time I'm going to serve and I'm going to sing and this is like ah, okay now ah, ah mungu ni jazi sasa. Now I, I can't do this ministry. You make him like our, our favorite pair of shoes. Eh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you go for them, you know? Uh, yes, yes, you know. Um, but I, I, this is how I view um, Christianity. When Jesus knocks at the door of your heart before you get born again, let's say you are a house. When he knocks on that door, he's not, he's not uh, first of all, he's not coming to ask you to hide a few things in that small store and then he wants to come only in the sitting room a chill in the sitting room when it's very clean yes very clean and mm -hmm. all that he wants to come into that whole mess whatever you feel is unworthy he wants to come and deal with that he wants to come to the bedroom he wants to come to the, every compartment of your life not just a small compartment and as much as he wants to come he wants to come and deal with all that he wants to also be part of all that. Even in you, as he has mentioned, you see, he, it's not just about waking up on a Sunday and, you know, and that's when I'm only a believer. But he wants to actually be part of that every day. Every walk, single day. You know, with, mm -hmm. with us in that, in that house. And as well, um, when we're talking about this house, he, he actually, he's, he's very intentional in how he approaches this because he not only comes in, but he also starts changing the things that you cannot change on your own. He starts taking control of the things that he can't be able to. So when I look at really professing my faith, I really need to first of all understand that power that God has, that I'm not a perfect human being, right? That as much as I'm not perfect, God still has a lot to do in me. That I'm not ashamed of actually falling short because indeed it's only, you know, all I've seen and I've fallen short of the glory of God. Not just only a few people. Even if I'm part of the church and I'm serving, I've fallen short. But why I've fallen short of Christ's standard. Christ has set that standard. And so I need to actually um, keep on, I, he, I need him to be actually uh, able to, you know, help me not fall short each and every time that I'm, um, you know, that I'm living, you know. And that is so powerful because for me i feel sometimes we want to hold back because we feel our mistakes are, can be so magnified out there and um not even uh like no one is going to help us and shield us at all oh, my mistake is big or something like that you know you want to actually hold back but i feel god is really not about that you know when paul is talking about not being ashamed of the gospel he really wants us to come out come out um, um, and, and talk about this faith. And Jesus himself says that if you deny me before... I will deny you before my father. How much and worse is that? So what I am getting from you is that then the fear of us falling short at any point should not bar us from being outspoken about our testimonies and being in Christ. So just as we close, I would like for you to share an instance where you shared your testimony and later that week, or probably after a year, someone just came to you and said, you know what, Mark, when you said this, it really touched me. It spoke to me, and I felt that I, I, need, to, I need to just give my life to Christ. Is there such an instance in your life? Well, there are many. <laughs> there are many. Um, um, I normally I like high school missions. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of that from high school missions. Where a young man just comes and, um, or a young lady just comes and like, hey, by the way, you sharing your testimony about how you, how God took you through drug abuse and substance abuse, um, and alcoholism, and that actually um, has been a blessing to me. And I feel I actually would love to follow this Christ that you follow. But even not going far from that. Even here on Life Chat, someone has had my testimony through Life Chat um, as well, and they're like, "Hey, by the way, this testimony I feel would be so powerful for uh, my, my child, you know." And oh, his testimony really touched me, and I feel, "Hey, I, I need to shed off some of few things. I know it's not easy, but uh, you know, please pray for me." You know those kind of things. Um, I feel, yeah. I mean, sharing a testimony definitely has an impact on other people. So I, 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 that's, 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 that's what I could share on that. And I like that because having to, see, to show people that the word of Christ is living and active in my life and it can be the same for you too is very profound. 
and works way more in drawing people into salvation than just by words themselves. Aha, uh -huh, Junior. When when Mark was just sharing about the testimony, I remembered. Um, I, I think it's last. I think last month. I'm at, uh, at the start of this month. Um, we're just we're just talking with, with one of my friends. She, she's been my friend since high school, but she's never told me about her struggle. But the only thing that made her tell me about what she was going through is because I shared with her. And and you know, to her, I looked perfect. And it's what most of us as Christians um, tend to give uh, to the world. We we give them this this sense that you know what we don't struggle, we don't go through problems. You know, even even in our work and in our relationship with broke. God, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we don't become broke. Yeah, you uh -huh. know, we're always rich. We always we're, we're always good. Everything is always okay in our life, in, in our lives. You know, and it's not always that that way. We struggle as Christians as well. We go through hard hard moments. But you know, the difference between us and and and, and the world is. Uh, is because Christ always walks every single moment of our hardships. You know, he walks, he walks together with us. He walks each and every step we take, he takes it with us. And, and, and I, I had to tell my friend one thing, a very important thing, that the only, th the only reason why I'm, I'm still in Christ and I'm still moving on and I'm still, you know, here right now is because, um, you know, Christ has always refreshed me. Christ has always has always been there for me, even in, in the moments where I thought he was not, you know, where I felt he was not. So it wasn't about my feeling. It was, it, it, it's, not about, it's not about how, how I feel, what I do. It's just about who he is as a person. Christ being God himself is so merciful and he's always there for us. No matter what we do, and it's not, that, is not, that is not a license to do wrong. That is not a license to do anything, but, but he's always there for us. And to just answer that question, um, yes, first of all, my testimony, my testimony of what I uh, of what I did and who I was back then, helped my friend because we were in the same. We met, we actually met in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a music funky, and music funky is you know they're always tricky. Yeah, ah. if you <laughs> if you've gone to to high school and music, I you always know music funky is always you know. But this friend, um, she 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 got to share her testimony and she got to relieve herself. A lot of pain from a lot of pain. She she wasn't going to church when when she was sharing her testimony. She wasn't going to church, uh, you know. She wasn't praying, and she 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 was a Christian. She was a Christian, and she was so devoted to church. But just because she went, she, she underwent a certain period, and she thought, you know, now I'm not qualified to be to, to be in the presence of God. I'm not qualified to even call God and to just. She felt very terrible. But but as sharing. She realized that, you know what, I'm not the only one who's struggling. Other people that I look up to and other people that I see as being perfect have all, I've also been here. And no one is perfect. Always remember that. No one is perfect. And we always need to, to remember this, yeah? That we need to, to we just need to, to, be, to be vulnerable and, 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 and share our testimonies. You don't know who's listening. You don't know, you don't know who needs it. But someone out there needs it. I like that. You don't know who needs it, but someone out there needs your testimony. We have seen and drawn from the life of Christ that Christ encouraged us to be very bold, not just by actions, but even in our speaking about our relationship with him. Just like Junior says, we do not know who needs our testimony, but someone definitely out there needs to hear that testimony to understand that God indeed does have power to get them out of that situation and that God can save and that God is there and walking with us every single step of the way. This is to just encourage every single Christian out there to be bold about speaking about their relationship with Jesus Christ. And only then will the world get to know that Christ is living in us and that we have acknowledged Christ's Lordship over our lives and that we have invited him to be a part of our everyday living. So we encourage you here at Life Chat to be bold and speak it out. Speak Jesus and proclaim his wonderful name and tell it to the world, tell it to all the nations that you know God and he knows you and he loves you because he says that if we deny him in front of men, he will do just the same even to God the Father. But because we do not want to be left out when all of us are journeying to heaven, let's just make sure we do the same. It was a nice and wonderful chat here on Life Chat about testimonies. Make sure to join us next week when we get to have another enjoy, enjoyable and wonderful episode. From us at Life Chat, it's bye-bye.